Hi, everyone. Um, sorry, we had a little te technical difficulties. You know, <laughs> it happens, but we're back. Uh, just to recap uh, this slide, in case um, you didn't hear, because I'm not sure when it cut off. Uh, we Our focus is to create uh, art programs that include uh, special needs persons so to, to let them know that they are capable and able to do all the various things that they see other persons doing, uh, playing music uh, and creating all these different forms of art. And so we aim to get uh, uh, professionals in the field, uh, which would consist of the group members, to host various sessions. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we aren't forcing any one particular art form on the participants, and so that they would be able to choose from a wide range of interests, so that we know that they are you know, 100% invested in the program and they will get the max, maximum uh, output from it. Right, so next slide. So the different uh, art forms that we will cover are visual arts, you know, graphic design, art education, therapeutic arts, aromatherapy, uh, jewelry making, and music comp composition, as well as uh, uh, culinary arts. I realized it got um, cut out of this slide, but also culinary arts would be included in the, the program. All right, so here you can see our various objectives. And uh, so at the beginning, uh, leading up to this, we had uh, various sessions with uh, experts from uh, abroad, from the, uh, sorry, <laughs> one second. All right, so we had uh, different sessions with uh, professionals that uh, already work with uh, special needs persons and that uh, they would, uh, so that we would uh, learn from them how they cope and how, what things they use and put in place to make programs like these possible. So some of the people we worked with are Emily Miller from Studio Works uh, and the Kentucky School for the Blind uh, we worked with uh, a number of their teachers, uh, including Peggy Sinclair Morris, which is the principal, uh, Patrice Ising, which is the elementary program instructional assistant, and Tabitha Rock, which is the music and arts teacher. We also did some sessions with uh, Rob Gullen from the American Printing House for the Blind. And in these sessions, uh, they showed us uh, how they ran, like, certain their art classes and uh, what they did to encourage and empower the students to, uh, you know, be creative and have confidence. We also met some of the students that were a part of their programs and the artwork that they produced was really amazing. Um, you, you know, it was really a beautiful thing to see because uh, based on uh, certain misconceptions that people generally have of a special needs persons, uh, seeing this art, you would not, ev that would not be your first thought that this person was a special needs. So we, uh, because at the beginning, so in the beginning, this was, uh, well, we chose to now run a advocacy uh, campaign, 
because uh, of uh, the restrictions placed on us by COVID, we were not able to uh, run the physical um, course as yet, but we are looking forward to doing so in uh, the coming months once some um, things uh, ease up. Right? So this, this side here is the proposed activities that I mentioned earlier, right? And of course, we are going to keep in mind that uh, everyone is uh, unique. And uh, of course, therefore, the courses will be modified to uh, suit them. So before we have, we have a general skeleton of the project. And when we get the participants, we'll be able to do further work to uh, create the program designed specially for them. All right, so here we can see the uh, skills and uh, some of our aims that we want to get through to the participants during uh, the program. You know, appreciating art, uh, using creativity as stress relief. And I think mm -hmm. this is one of the more important points mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. being a, mm -hmm. a special needs, you mm -hmm. face a lot of challenges and it can be very frustrating at times. So having art and being able to use art and creativity to relieve some of that stress we believe would be a very beneficial tool for them and would help them grow and mature as a person and would help them lead better lives. Right, so here we have a little bit of things that we discovered along the way. And uh, it has been proven, as you know, that creative practices uh, aid in help improving health, self-esteem, and relieving stress. And uh, you know, it would also help them uh, be able to better interact and uh, engage in social uh, discussions, knowing uh, you know popular artwork at the time and being up to date with popular culture, because that is <laughs> how uh, discussions are usually had, conversations with um, friends and new people that you meet. And, uh, you know, art is also a highly adaptable uh, activity. And so that is why we chose uh, this to, uh, um, to use any program to help empower these uh, the participants and also you know create a timeline and to set goals personal goals for them that they want to work on and that mm. they want to improve on because that was one of the things that we saw in the sessions with our facilitators that they would uh, ask the students, you know, what they wanted to do, what they would like to grow towards and set that goal and then assist them in that journey to reaching that end point. So the core benefits, are, you know, friendship building and interaction opportunities, like I said, with the, uh, you know, being aware of popular culture and having topics to interact that are you know common amongst people you know helps build friendships easier and you know have smoother conversation you know the payroll models so in the sessions we will have uh, you know mentors and tutors and also the assistants because you know sometimes you may need additional help from family members or guardians and that would also help to expand the circle of understanding and bridge the gap between uh, special needs persons and uh, regular persons. 
so like i said before the uh, we want to host a creative skill building program and uh, you know we're working towards uh, you know getting this live and running but uh, right now of course we are we have been in discussion with uh, some groups and uh, they look uh, very promising and uh, like but you know we have no um final say yet because you know everyone is very cautious during this COVID time definitely but um yes so i just have uh, two more things i want to share with you that i need to uh pull up so just give me one second Okay, so right now we had a few interviews with some persons within the community. And right now I wanna share a video with you from uh, the principal of a school in uh, Arima and uh, her experience with the children and uh, the importance of uh, creating programs like these. So. Okay, so we are not hearing the audio at this time. So if you could just give us a minute to sort it out. In the meanwhile, a really exciting presentation so far, Oloshe. Okay. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> Sharon Lewis, the administrator of Lady Hoshai School, Arima. Inclusion embraces differences among individuals. It brings the value of respect and tolerance for fellow human beings. I can share with you two challenges that we have experienced. One, the affordability by parents to provide specialized treatment for their children, for example, speech therapy. is beyond the reach of many parents because of the high cost. And transition planning. The lack of opportunities for, for students have seen many of them transition to home. Therefore, that, that has influenced our planning for the school environment. 
requirement to provide avenues where students can sustain a viable income. Right, so we have programs geared towards that aspect. But we would like to have more opportunities available to, for students beyond the school doors. Right, so they can have choices. I have observed that many private sector institutions are implementing the policy of hiring individuals with special needs, and that is important, that is good. The implementation of the policy to hire individuals within the workforce, that is a step in the right direction. Now, enough is a relative term, but when you measure the resources, the equity of the distribution of the resources among the sectors, the various sectors in society, enough is not being done for everyone to feel included and everyone there embraces both individuals with special needs and those without. Enough is not being done for all to feel included. Trust and honesty are my core values. I believe that they're important to build relationships. Relationship within the work environment, relationship within your home, within your community, within your school. It is important. It is the foundation for all healthy relationships. Trust and honesty. And, and when you speak in inclusion, inclusion is about building that relationship between and among among individuals with disabilities and those without. And trust and honesty are important to sustain that relationship. Thank you. All right. So uh, that video, I think, sums up a lot of uh, what we would like to accomplish in this uh, uh, program that we would like to run. And uh, as Sharon said, uh, you know, trust and honesty is important to building, uh, you know, that foundation and uh, sharing with and, and um, creating inclusion with uh, those with special needs and those without. And uh, this program is to help add to you know those resources that she pointed out are not enough to help include those with special needs and we will also be including regular members of the society so that they too can gain this understanding and uh, spread the uh, the circle of understanding amongst everyone so just finally, I am going to share with you the uh, flyer that we worked on. Right, so this would be the flyer that we are going to use to uh, advertise our program. And we hope to get a buy on from uh, a lot of different organizations to help spread the word. We are in conversation with some uh, organizations already, and uh, we hope that we can finalize those things soon and uh, be able to work towards uh, something so we can start working with the participants and help, you know, open this new Set of understanding and inclusion and uh, promoting uh, inclusivity to, for everyone. So uh, that's it for my presentation. I hope everyone enjoyed and 
I believe now it's uh, question time. <laughs> yes, it's question time. But you did a wonderful job. Thank you so much, Ulushe, and your team for really considering such an important topic. Because many times, you know, some people don't like to delve too much or deal with the issues of special needs. But we are all part of one global society and everybody have a role to play and everybody could be a part of arts in some way. So that leads me on to my first question. You know, for many of the groups that presented today, a big challenge was COVID and their ideas had to stop or pivot a bit because of COVID. For you, how do you plan to navigate this challenge if the restrictions does not ease? Would you consider some sort of online teaching medium? And do you have any idea of what that might look like, especially for persons with special needs? Yes. So initially, we 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 do have a advocacy campaign that we are going to run. Um, this was a first look into it, and what that video that I just played is included. We do also have some other videos that we are working on um, that um, from different members of the society, including persons that have special needs and their experience in you know, the art world and how they navigate and deal with these um, day-to-day -day problems. So we will, we have been looking into uh, different ways that we can possibly have this online um, because, as you can see, a lot of the world has, you know, started to open up and do courses online and things like that. So I believe there are a lot of resources out there that we can lean on to, uh, you know, be able to run this project online eventually. Wonderful. I, I really look forward to that because I think it's really important that we find innovative ways to encourage this group into also digital translate transformation and really using the technology. That is a, that is a beautiful addition that could add to your program. Yes. My next and, question uh, has... Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, oh, no, um, no, so an important part of that, of course, is to have the um, support of their family and or guardian or caretaker, whoever it may be, and I think that is a really important part because uh, when you have uh, those persons taking part in the program, sometimes, you know, they themselves, even though they are so close to the person that has special needs, they do not see the potential that they may have because of, uh, you know, how society has uh, taught us to think of these persons that we do not, um, you know, our minds generally aren't open to the possibilities and the capabilities that, you know, they have. Well, Latoya, I think can I just jump in quickly? Sorry. Sure. Back yeah. to your um, question about how we would manage with the lockdowns and the going virtual. So with some of the stakeholders that we've been in contact with, um, one way around that would be us having sessions at their head offices and then with the ones that are available to go online to sort of have a blended module. So that's one way we're working towards it. Nice. And that is really important. And I think part of Olushay's answer leads me on to my next question. Mm -hmm. You know, what are the support systems that you have in place? Are the facilitators currently trained to, to work with special needs? Or would there be that additional support system? Just so that we're clear, what, what do you think those additional support systems would look like? Yes. So we are not uh, specifically trained in uh, dealing with persons with special needs. Like, we don't have a certificate. But uh, through the uh, uh, programs, that we did before with the facilitators who have had that experience. We have gained a lot of knowledge from them on how to run these types of programs. And we, of course, will be working with the other organizations that we want to partner with and take guidance from them as to how we should uh, you know, engage with the students and the different things we may need to put in place to allow for a easy learning environment. 
Great. That is I'm just jumping on. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm jumping on the back of that because a, a, a huge part of it is not us going in with this is what we want to give you and this is what you're having. But I think Olshay mentioned it before where we are adapting everything to their needs and their wants specifically. So they, whatever they want to learn within what we're offering is how we adapt it to them. And the organizations will help us give us that support and the family and the community groups to also build like community interaction that way and get support that way. Great. And my last question is, is a bit about sustainability. Um, how do you think that maybe you could incorporate some sustainable element like an artisan market or some area where everything is produced and then they somehow able to have a sale and get some revenue portion from it that could go back towards the students itself or the association that they belong to? What are your thoughts on that? Well, part of the original plan is that after all of the programs, we do plan on having a festival of sorts where they will be able to display all of the things that they have learned and uh, showcase it and things will be on sale as well as we do have the support from some other stakeholders that would assist in the running of the program. So we have that as well as the market that we'll hold at the end, along with, uh, I guess, a graduation ceremony of sorts to, uh, you know, display all of the works and, you know, uh, congratulate them on their achievements. And to give them sort of a certification of participation to, you know, celebrate their achievements, their involvement, the hard work they would have put in, that sort of thing. Well, I think kudos to you. I think this all-inclusive team really have a strong and viable program, and I do hope to see it implemented very soon. So my last question to you is from being a part of the whole workshop and the training for Common Good. What is your takeaway? What is your key lesson learned? Huh. Perseverance. <laughs> yes, definitely perseverance. Um, I agree with Deborah. Uh, there was a lot of work to be done and uh, you know sometimes things aren't always uh, easily accessible but you know you have to once you care enough about something and you put any time and effort i think you always see results and so i think we have already started to see some results of our hard work and we do look forward to continuing our efforts and seeing greater things blossom from our efforts. Thank you for that. Deborah, any closing statement from you? Um, well, <laughs> perseverance is my big takeaway. I just wanted to add that the video that he showed is one of several episodes that we're producing and they will be able to view them on the For Common Good YouTube site. And so we also have that and some other social media stuff coming out. You know, look for it. We'll be there. Oh, yes. We're also going to have a Instagram page. So you can look out for us on Instagram in soon. Sure. As soon as we get um, all of the material together, we will be launching on Instagram and our um, advocacy, advocacy campaign. And as well, you would see more information about the programs there. Oh, okay. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone, to Emily from Studio Works, the Kentucky School for the Blind, Julian, Kevon, everyone for this amazing opportunity. And to yourself, Latoya. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you so much for being two wonderful participants in this presentation this afternoon. And for those who are logged on, I hope you really enjoyed what was offered and let us continue to be all inclusive as we embrace arts for everyone. Thank you.
Hello. Yeah, so it's me again. And just like that, we are out of time for the day. Um, it was a fantastic weekend, which started off on Friday with our socially themed movies and our exhibition from No Filter. Then Saturday, we had our Youth Arts Enrichment Program participants joining us for Hello. the summit. Yeah, so it's me again. And, and um, I just have to say thank you to everybody for today. Um, the Arima by Louisville cohort. You all did an excellent, excellent job um, over the past six months, as well as today, sharing your work. I believe everybody has a greater understanding now of what our For Common Good journey is about and what it will be about in the future. As we move forward, the work is only now starting. To stay up to date on all things For Common Good, definitely stay locked into www.forcommongoodplatform.org. And in the upcoming months, we have a lot more content a lot more information, a lot more programs and projects to bring to you. This is only the beginning of a much longer journey. Thank you to our guests today. Thank you to our presenters. Thank you to our moderators. Thank you to our booth holders in the expo. You are all fantastic. And I definitely look forward to working with you all again. And I will be in touch soon about how we can work more directly. This goes out especially to our partners from abroad. For Common Good is really about that cultural collaboration, cross-cultural connection. We operate on three C's. The first C is cultivation. So cultivation focuses on the sort of training and dialogue and information building that our cohort goes through first. So that's where they build their capacity. Our second C is the collaboration C. So that is where they go into these communities, go find these groups, go find these young persons, go find these organizations to then collaborate with. And the last part of our mapping plan is, is connection. And that's what happens with forums like this. So first you cultivate, then you collaborate, and then it ends with this connection where everybody gets the opportunity to share. Everybody gets the opportunity to meet someone else. Everybody gets the opportunity to network. And out of that, something good will come. Yeah, I'm really sleepy now. It's been a fantastic weekend. Um, we have to get some rest, but we won't take a rest for too long because we have a lot of content to upload for the rest of this week. All of the sessions today have been recorded and they will be on our YouTube channel. We will upload some every day over the next few days. So even if you want to look at something again or share it, or something you were really interested in, or get someone's contact or name, all of the information is going to be there. So stay logged in to our website, stay logged on to our Facebook page, stay logged on to our Instagram, and all of them are for Common Good platform. And with that, I would like to sign out for the afternoon, for the weekend, and it has been a pleasure, it has been an honor, and I am happy to see this culminate into something very special. This weekend was special. So again, my name is Kevin Fodringham. I'm the executive director of CFAF for Common Good. And I say thank you and enjoy the rest of your weekend.